Okay, OpenAI just dropped their newest model, GPT 5.2. So let's put it head to head against Claude Opus 4.5. Today I'm testing both models on two practical builds. Firstly, a personal finance app with spending charts and category breakdowns. And secondly, a classic breakout game with paddle controls and collision detection. In my last video, Opus swept GPT 5.130 on creative writing. So we'll see if the newest model from OpenAI can close the gap on a few coding based projects. Quick note on the pricing, GPT 5.2 is actually 40% more expensive than 5.1, but it's still significantly cheaper than Opus. We're talking $1.75 per million input tokens versus $5 for Opus, and $14 versus $25 for output. So roughly three times cheaper on input and almost two times cheaper on output. The question is whether the cost difference translates to quality difference. So let's find out. All right, so we're ready for our first test, the finance app build. We're set up here in Cursor with both models in their own separate empty directories. On the left-hand side, we've got Opus 4.5. We're using the model in Cursor Chat. We can see here the version in Cursor Chat is Opus 4.5 thinking with high effort reasoning. On the right hand side, we've got GPT 5.2 selected also in Cursor Chat. The version we have access to in Cursor Chat is GPT 5.2 with medium reasoning. So those are the two models and reasoning modes we're going to be using for this test. I'm giving both models the same prompt, build an app where users can input transactions with an amount, description and date. It should auto categorize spending, things like food, transport, and entertainment, and show a visual breakdown with charts. I've also asked for a monthly health score to give users a quick read on how their spending looks overall. No framework specified, no design guidelines, just the core requirements. So we'll see what they come up with from a tech stack and design perspective without any real guidelines. We'll hit enter on these prompts and we'll see how they go. Okay, both models have completed the build and the time difference was pretty significant. Opus 4.5 finished in 5 minutes and 40 seconds. GPT 5.2 took 11 minutes and 20 seconds. So double the amount of time to complete the build. Looking at how they approached it, Opus just dove straight in and started building. GPT took a bit more of a methodical route. It laid out a plan first, scaffolded the project step by step and it actually hit a tailwind configuration issue that it had to troubleshoot along the way. Both landed on React with local storage for persistence. Both implemented the auto categorization and health score. One thing I noticed, GPT added the ability to manually override a category, which is a nice touch. Opus went heavier on the branding, calling it Opus Finance with a custom dark theme. So similar destinations, but very different journeys to get there. We'll now jump over to dev mode and have a look at the apps that they've built. All right, here's the Opus 4.5 build. First impressions, it looks really polished. The UI and design it looks really good. It's gone with a full brand identity. We've got a logo at the top and a name Opus Finance with a tagline, your personal finance snapshot. The monthly health score looks really good, the way that it's got this gauge here with a score that we can track. And little touches with the emojis in each section also just make it look really good without being too over the top. Let's test the core functionality. Now I'll add a few transactions. We'll say $300 on groceries. We'll also do $150 on restaurants. Say $80 on petrol. And we'll say $5,000 for income. And we'll say salary for the description. So if we scroll down now, we can see the spending breakdown and transaction sections. We can see that it has categorized each item automatically. Food and dining for groceries and restaurant. Petrol has been categorized as transport and salary as income. We've got our spending breakdown on the left. So we can see 84% is food and dining, 15% transport. So that functionality is working correctly. And again, the design is really clean and easy to follow. We scroll back up, we can see we've also got our monthly health score, which is updated. It says 55 fair, and then we've got some flags here. It says low savings rate, spending well below income, 
high spending in food and dining and focused on essentials. So we've got some feedback as well that it is providing based on our spending activity. So it's analyzing the transactions and spending breakdown and coming back with these recommendations here. So overall, great UI, the categorization is working well and the health score is doing its job. It feels like a finished product, a really solid build from just that simple prompt that we provided. So really good performance once again by Opus 4.5. Now let's have a look at GPT 5.2. Straight away you can see the design is a step below. It's functional, everything's laid out in sections, but it's that generic dark mode look we often see from GPT models. Personal finance snapshot as the title here is just basic font. There's no real style behind it like the Opus version. The health score here, it's just a flat number with a bar. I think the gauge and the way that Opus 4.5 displayed it was a lot better from a UI and design perspective. GPT did add a couple of useful touches. It's got add sample data here. If I click that, that would fill the dashboard up with sample data so you can see how it works. So that's a good touch. Let's run the same transactions through the GPT 5.2 dashboard now. So we'll say 300 for groceries. We'll say 150 on restaurant. Uh, 80 on petrol. And then we'll flick over to income and add 5,000 as salary. So we can see on the right, it has categorized a couple of the transactions. We've got groceries as food and restaurant as food. Petrol it has as other and salary as income. As we can see here, we also have this drop down where we can override the category. So that is that feature that GPT 5.2 implemented that Opus 4.5 didn't. So for petrol, for example, it hasn't nailed the auto characterization, whereas Opus 4.5 automatically assigned it as transport, but we can override it here and change that to transport. And you can see here it says now it's a manual category. So that is working, but not as good as Opus 4.5 at detecting the category automatically. We can see the monthly expenses now is accurate. We've got 84% of food and 15% for transport. On the left hand side we've got our monthly health score 80 out of 100 it says great as the status and the notes says savings rate looks strong discretionary spending is relatively high so we've got some feedback as well so it is obviously looking at both the transactions and spending breakdown and then giving us some feedback here as well so both apps work transactions categories charts and health scores are all functional the difference is the polish Opus 4.5 nailed the categorization out of the box and delivered a noticeably cleaner and more branded design. As you can see here, it just looks a lot nicer and cleaner from a UI perspective. GPT, on the other hand, on categories where we had to override one and the UI is just a bit more generic and basic. One thought, if you're cost conscious, you could potentially use GPT 5.2 for backend logic and bring in Opus for the UI and design work. That way you play to each model's strengths and potentially save on costs. Because Opus 4.5 costs more per million tokens, that might be better saved for the UI and design stuff. Because as we can see here, GPT 5.2 has delivered on the actual functionality. It's just fallen short from the UI and design perspective. So for this test, Opus 4.5 takes the win. Let's now move on to test two. All right, now for test number two, we're going to ask both models to build a breakout game. A breakout game is a classic kind of arcade game. There should be a paddle at the bottom, a ball bouncing around, rows of bricks at the top. If we hit a brick, it should break, we'll score points, and then if we miss the ball, we lose a life. Of us for score tracking, lives, and a win condition when all the bricks have been cleared. Again, the prompt is exactly the same for both models, and we have no framework specified and no design requirements. Just the core gameplay so we'll see how each model handles the build and what design they come up with so we'll hit enter here and we'll see how long they take to build the game and then we'll test both out okay both models have finished building the game and the time difference has completely flipped from test one gpt 5.2 finished in one minute and 43 seconds opus 4.5 took six minutes and 27 seconds so nearly four times longer opus took here to build the game Looking at the builds, GPT 5.2 kept it simple, self-contained HTML, 
CSS and JavaScript. So we'll open the file, play the game, and we're done. Opus 4.5 went a very different direction. It committed to a full neon retro futuristic aesthetic, particle effects, ball trails, CRT scan lines, animated UI, the works, but it also spent a lot of time trying to test the game in the browser and running into issues. It tried clicking, double clicking, pressing space, enter. It tried all of those controls, basically troubleshooting its own click detection for several minutes. That's what ended up slowing it down. So GPT 5.2 shipped fast and functional. Opus 4.5 spent extra time on visuals and polish, but also got slowed down with debugging. Let's now see if the extra effort from Opus 4.5 pays off. We'll jump over to dev mode and try out both games. Okay, GPT 5.2 was the first to finish, so we'll try that game first. As we can see here, UI and design-wise doesn't look too great from our first impression. We've, we can see it says breakout with some controls and a start button. We've got score and lives in the top right and a name top left, but UI and design is lacking a bit. We'll hit start and see how we go. We can see there are blocks here. We've got our paddle at the bottom and a ball, but there, oh, now it started, so it, it is working now. It looks like it's clearing every block it hits. I think it's meant to just hit one and rebound back to us, but it looks like it's going through them all. That's kind of working now, so it looks like it is functioning. The design looks okay. The actual physics of the ball is a little bit off, and now we're just going straight up and down. But we can see it is functioning correctly. We might try and clear the level. Although that's going to take a while. So I might lose a life and see what happens. Life lost. And then it says we've got two lives left. Press space to serve to start again. That's a quick look at the GPT 5.2 version. Before we make a verdict, let's jump over and test out Opus 4.5. Okay, here's the Opus 4.5 version. This one's called Neon Breakout. We can see the UI and design already is a lot better. We've got a title for this game and then a tagline again, break through the neon barrier and a start game button, which lights up when we hover over it. We've got our lives top right and our score top left. Let's hit start and check it out. So again, the same mechanism here where we've got the paddle on the ball and we've got a click to serve it. The actual blocks here don't quite line up at the top. You can see on the left we've got a gap here, but there's no gap on the right, so it's not quite centered. We've served the ball. This is moving a fair bit quicker than the other one. That's a bit more challenging. I'll try to keep it going, but functionally and the way the mechanism is working is correct. We've got a score. It's definitely a lot harder to keep this one going, so not sure how much longer will last here. Game over, final score and a play again button. We might try once more, so we can click to serve the ball, and then we've just got to try and keep up with uh, the paddle to keep the blocks going. We can see there the physics and the mechanism is working similar as well to the GPT 5.2 version. All right, so in summary, both games work. The paddle moves, the ball bounces, the bricks break, the score tracks, the lives count down correctly. So the core gameplay is solid on both. Design-wise, Opus 4.5 went all in on that neon retro aesthetic. The glowing board of the stylized title, the diamond icons for lives. The whole arcade vibe has been presented here on the Opus version. GBT 5.2 kept it cleaner. Nice gradient background, simple grid, clear UI. Both look good, but Opus definitely has more visual impact. You would definitely need to work with the UI and design on the GPT 5.2 version before you shipped it. The title, for example, and the score and the lives is just pretty basic and generic. The one small issue we saw on the Opus version was the brick layout. It has a gap on the left but not on the right. A minor formatting bug, but it is there. The big difference this time was speed. GPT 5.2 built this in under two minutes. Opus took over six, and a chunk of that was spent debugging its own click detection. So for this test, I'd call it pretty close to a draw. Opus looks better, but GPT 5.2 shipped faster with cleaner code, and it reinforces what we saw in test one. If you're optimizing for cost and efficiency, there's a real case for using GPT 5.2 for your core logic and functionality, then bringing in Opus 4.5 when you need that design polish. Okay, so to wrap up, we've ran two tests, a finance app and a breakout game. 
Test 1, the Finance app, Opus 4.5 wins, better design, better auto characterization, and half the build time. GPT 5.2's version worked but needed manual help on categories and the UI was noticeably more basic. Test number two, the breakout game. I'd call this one a draw. Both games play well. Opus looks better with that neon aesthetic, but GPT 5.2 shipped in under two minutes compared to over six for Opus 4.5. So that speed and efficiency versus the polish was the difference. Therefore, kind of hard to split. The takeaway, Opus 4.5, is clearly the stronger model for UI and design. When you need something that looks polished and production ready, it delivers. GPT 5.2 is significantly cheaper, and in the case of test number two, it was faster. Roughly three times cheaper on input and almost two times cheaper on output. So the core functionality it produces at that cost basis is solid. So if you're cost conscious, there's a real workflow here you could look at. Use GPT 5.2 to build your back-end logic and core features. Then bring in Opus 4.5 to refine the front-end and design. That way you get the best of both worlds and you'll save a bit on cost as well. That said, if budget isn't a concern and you just want the best output in one shot, Opus 4.5 is still the model to beat. It's going to nail the UI and design a lot of the time on that one-shot build. So you can spend some time tweaking and debugging and refining if you prefer to just work with one model and cost isn't an issue. Let me know in the comments which model you're using and whether you've had a chance to try GPT 5.2 yet and what your experience has been. If you found this useful, hit subscribe. I've got more comparisons coming as these models keep evolving. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.